Hey Scott, how you doing today, man? Good, good. How are you? Good. I really appreciate your time. No problem. I'm actually heading up to see one of your favorite bands when I get off the phone. I'm going to uh, see Kiss tonight in Binghamton. Oh, really? Yeah. On the farewell tour. Oh so. uh, yeah, well, that should that should be uh, that should be fun. Yeah. Um, where are you calling from, man? Uh, for, uh, we're in Las Vegas right now. You're on, you're on tour? Did you play there last night? Or? Uh, actually, night before last, we had a day off yesterday. How many shows are you into the, the tour? With, uh, with, with your the, headlining tour? Um, well, right now we're still with the Chili Peppers. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, we, uh, we did the first, um, first, uh, two and a half months of summer, um, on our own headline, like, radio, uh, festivals. Right. And, uh, and also, you know, uh, um, subsidizing the, 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 you know, the the rest of the days uh, during the week uh, with our own shows, and then um, in uh, in uh, August we we hooked up with uh, the Peppers, and we've been out with them now for um, about five weeks. By the time you get to Wilkesbury on October fourth, you will be uh, headlining again. Oh yes, we will. Yeah, so, yeah, we will. And uh, when does that start? Uh, that starts. I think the first show is um, is actually, uh, I believe the. Um, hmm, well, let's see. I don't. I don't know exactly what. Yeah, the, I, mean, I mean, I don't mean a date, but I mean, is is the show here on October fourth? Will you be out for a week by then, or two weeks, or will that be your second show? You have any yeah, idea? That'll that'll be your, in the first week of shows, like oh, the cool. second or third show on our cool. own. All right. Yeah. Look yeah. It'll be it. nice, you know, because. Uh, um, out, out with the Peppers, uh, since we're going on before them, um, you know, we, we don't play as long a set. I mean, we, uh, you know, we, we do have a situation where we're, where it's, uh, you know, virtually a co-headlining situation where, you know, we, we split production and have equal production and that, but, uh, you know, we're playing a, um, an, uh, an hour set, uh, with these guys. And, uh, you know, we like to, when we're on our own, we like to play, uh, you know, around an hour and 45 to two hours so right uh, I want to congratulate you on um, on the album number four and on the success of uh, Sour Girl I love that song oh thank you very much I had a buck for every time I listened to that song this summer I could uh, take the rest of the year off I think <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you very much it's one of those uh, it's just one of those two that just kept rewinding it in the car and rewinding it well it's nice to feel like you know like uh, you uh, contributed something uh, you know uh Positive towards uh, towards music. Well, I've read that. Did you just did you approach this record? And I know you use the same producer, but when you were going into you know you were just coming off of your solo album, and it was sort of the band feeling their way back together. <clears throat> did you approach it any differently uh, in the studio or writing wise? Do you? I read where the music was laid down pretty much by a couple of the other guys in the band, and then you put the words on top. Is that how you've always written? Well, I mean, really how we do it is, uh, you know, for the most part, um, Robert and Dean write the majority of the instrumental music. Right. And uh, and I write um, all the lyrics and all the melodies. Okay. Um, you know, of course, that, you know, that isn't always the case. There's sometimes when I write the music, um, or, 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 I'll, or I'll have, like, a basic, uh, you know... Um, uh, two-part song idea and then I'll, you know, bring it to Robert or Dean and, and they'll embellish on it because I'm not the greatest uh, and most proficient guitar player. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, so there there isn't a formula that, that is, that's etched in stone, but, you know, for the most part, I do the lyrics and, and the melodies and, and Robert and Dean write the instrumental music. Do you feel um, you're growing as a, as a band when you when you come out of a studio after your fourth record? Uh, definitely. I mean, I... I uh, I, I notice, uh, you know, the growth uh, after every uh, record. Um, you know, with uh, with Core, um, I think we had a very clear cut idea of what we wanted to achieve, and uh, and then with Purple, we, you know, I think we felt that we had a little bit more freedom because of the success, with, uh, the massive success of Core, to experiment a little bit more, experiment a little bit more, and then, you know, with Tiny Music, I, I think we almost. Uh, um, revolted and rebelled against uh, what had um, become a very successful sort of, uh, um, you know, formula. Well, it might be, might be what might be misconstrued as a formula, and, and kind of went the opposite way with it. And then, obviously, with uh, my solo record, um, I, I wanted to do something completely different. Um, 
And then, you know, with number four again, I think we sort of went back to uh, the the roots, the nuts and bolts of, of uh, you know, what STP is about. And, uh, you know, I think first and foremost, we're, um, you know, a loud and, uh, and you know, uh, and sometimes loud, destructive, and sometimes beautiful, hard-rocking band. And uh, sure. I think that's what we kind of went for but I think there definitely is growth um, you know I mean as a as a uh, not only as a uh, musician but also as a music fan uh, every year that goes by we have the opportunity to um, you know become turned on to, to, to new um, new uh, artists you know and, sure. and uh, new songs and new albums and so you know the ones that are really good and would really inspire us you know um whether it's consciously or subconsciously, sort of, uh, you know, add to your uh, your repertoire of uh, what spices you can throw in the gumbo pot, you know. Sure. Now, when I, I, I read all these articles that had come to me um, from your press kit, from your publicist, you know, Rolling Stone, Spin, and I, I did notice that some of them up to maybe 70% of the, the article was spent talking about some of the problems you've had in the past and I'd like to focus my article on your music that's why that's all we've talked about so far that's great but but uh, just in my, my only question for you regarding all that is real simple how are you feeling how are you doing and is this a daily battle for you or have you leveled off where you feel you're out of the woods well you know what it's like this it's like um, uh, to answer your first question I feel um, I feel amazing except for the fact that uh, I just caught a cold uh, the day before yesterday and so I spent my day off uh, the the night of my day off in Las Vegas uh, not on the not on the craps table but uh, watching um, um, you know the Patriot on SpectraVision um, <laughs> while I was staring out the window at all the flickering lights and and well, I guess uh, I guess that was uh, what was in the cards for me. It was to, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, um, but uh, you know, I I I'm so grateful for uh, for you know this second chance I've been sort of given at life, and I really view it as uh, I've been given the opportunity to sort of start over with a whole new life and and it's not something that it's not saying that I regret the life I had before because I, I really feel that um, that I've been able to live two lives in one and I believe that uh, you know the pain that I went through and all the experiences that I had have uh, you know uh, become the mortar and the foundation you know that are that are making me the, the man that I am today and uh I don't believe that I would have ever been ready to become an equal participant in, in uh, my relationship with Mary, uh, my wife. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't believe I would have the capacity to be the friend that I am now to my to my brother and the friend that I am now to uh, the other three guys in in uh, in STP. And uh, I don't think that I um, you know would have ever been able to. Um, get to the point where I can actually appreciate and uh, just sort of and feel comfortable being in my own skin because I I didn't feel uh, I didn't appreciate myself or or I didn't feel comfortable in my skin before I became a junkie. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not that I despise myself so much that I was always on the verge of uh, of uh, you know. Um, suicide or anything um, but I just never really uh, well I don't know I, 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 all I know is I don't know how other people felt it just seemed that it, that that life in general maybe wasn't the worst thing but it surely wasn't the greatest thing right and uh, and so now because of what I've gone through I can actually say that uh, you know about 80% of the time I uh I like the um, I like the ride I'm on, man, and uh, it's uh, it's it's quite an experience. And so um, I, uh, you know, I really don't I really don't um, look back at anything with a lot of regret. And uh, and you know, it's uh, I like it. The, the, the second part of your question, I can't. Uh-huh. 
Sorry, for a how, where, I, I asked you, uh, I have you leveled off where it's Oh, as far as the system. fear. Um, going definitely. Back or, you know, do you feel you're out of the woods? And that, that well, you know, I, I don't ever feel like I'm completely path. out of the woods because I have, uh, there are, are uh, you know, two, there are too many people, you know, who, um, who I know very well and who I'm very close with who I've seen, um, you know, uh, relapse again after having some time. Mm. Um, but I can, however, say that it's not a daily struggle. Um, no, it's not a daily struggle. And, and you know, I, and I think that's because I really like how I feel the majority of the time in my own skin. And, uh, um, I mean, it's kind of hokey to say in a sense, you know, but, uh, I feel like I get, um, I don't have that same kind of fear that I used to have, uh, you know, previous to being a junkie. Uh, you know, I always remember having this sort of bizarre sense of, of always feeling frightened around other people. Um, and I don't have that. And I think that was that kind of insecurity and, and you know, um, ended up, uh, you know, being a big part of why I, 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 I got loaded. And, uh, and so it's not really about struggling with it today. Um, <clears throat> and that's, uh, it's quite an amazing thing to be, to be freed from that because uh, all I can remember for the better part of a decade was, uh, you know, was that even when I was clean is on the... You know, forefront of my mind, of my consciousness, um, just really wanting to uh, uh, be, um, you know, obliterated, intoxicated. Right. I read an interview with you that you gave. I think it was in the last year, and I agree with you. So I guess I'm just asking you to talk about it. We you say you're a little frustrated by the state of rock and roll right now because there aren't hardly any rock and roll bands. Yeah, you know, I am frustrated. Um, it's hard to get a it, spin, isn't it? What's that? It's hard to get a spin on the radio. With it, the well, you know, it's like, I we don't, uh, it doesn't, it, we luckily haven't suffered from that, um, you know, because I, I, I don't know, I don't know, we, we've just had, you know, I, I can't honestly say that, um, I wasn't just talking about you, but like a new band coming out. With well, a, yeah, with yeah. A couple um, guys playing guitars, you know. You know, it's 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 so true. I mean, I have my own little record company um, called Lavish Records, and uh, you know, my my brother is one of my partners. is uh, is one uh, you know a couple other very close friends of mine, and you know, we're always out looking for for uh, you know um, for for new artists, whether they're singer songwriters or 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 bands. A couple bands from Silver Lake we're looking at right now, and. You know, I have played some stuff for um, some record company executives who are friends of mine, um, you know, younger guys, like uh, Guy O'Siri uh, from Maverick, and it's real frustrating, man, to, uh, to get even a, a, a record executive who is a big fan of music to take the chance on any artist, any band who doesn't necessarily fit right into the cookie-cutter uh, shapes that, that, that everyone is everyone's looking for a certain shape yeah, right. and uh, and if it, you don't fit inside that mold then they're not willing to put money behind it because uh, you know I think it, a lot of it has to do with the fact that there are um, that all of the the record companies have sort of um, you know been melded into just a couple you know yeah, and right. also the fact that and, everything, right? and a lot of these radio stations are not autonomous anymore you know, they're owned by one big communications company. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and so, since it's become even more big, big, big business than it was before, um, you know, I think it's, uh, they would rather milk a trend for as much as it's worth and then try to create the next trend as opposed to try to discover the next exciting yeah, let thing. Yeah, let, let something break out naturally. Yeah, and, uh, you know, what that means is... Um, that it's working right now because I think, be, for one thing, because of the political and social environment over the last eight years, which has been, you know, for the most part, pretty good, I think Americans have gotten rather apathetic and rather lazy again. And uh, I, I think that um, when, when uh, young people especially stop uh, questioning what's going on and just sort of... Uh, are able to be force-fed just about anything um, 
uh, you know, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's laziness that takes place, right. and uh, I think that art suffers and music suffers, and people aren't so much looking for things that um, are asking a lot of questions or, or are, um, you know, lighting any fires anywhere. Everyone sort of just sort of, you know, goes to see the safe movies buys uh, the safe records and um, and I think that's because that's what uh, the big industry um, you know force feeds you and uh, because they know how to make that work it's really easy it's it's commercial it's simple and then even they've gotten so good that even they're they're even able to um, take something that's uh, that's pretty basic and uh, and regurgitate it and copy it and copy it and and make it seem like it's something um, uh, you know, fresh and and uh, and angry and exciting. Uh, I mean, even like within there is over over the last year and a half, there's been a resurgence of hard rock bands, but they're all the same. I yeah. mean, they're either rap rock bands or they're just this like uh, angry uh, angry white male. Yeah, right. You know, uh, rock. Um, and I don't know really the difference between what's going on there and uh, and the attitudes that were being expressed in in uh, you know the the worst parts of heavy metal because uh, you know what, I'm not saying that everyone has to, to be uh, you know a, a patron saint or or has to aspire to be um, you know righteous like uh, like uh, Bono or, or or Eddie Vedder or uh, you know um, or Sinead O'Connor but uh I mean, I don't know. I just find it rather repulsive uh, that, that uh, the statement that seems to be made by uh, a lot of these bands is, uh, you know, how uh, how boringly um, fal- and falsely decadent they think they are by throwing a sliced luncheon meat at uh, at strippers' asses and uh, <laughs> selling that as a rock and roll image to young people. The degradation of uh, of um, you know these pitiful uh, you know women yeah. and that uh, I just have been rather disgusted by that lately and I just kind of have this feeling that um, you know there aren't a lot of people taking uh, uh, a stand for anything and I don't think everyone has to be politically motivated because there are, there have been times when I felt politically motivated and a lot of times when I when I've had been the only thing I've been notif- motivated to do was, uh, uh, you know, shoot drugs and uh, cover up whatever uh, pain I was in or, uh, you know, or a slight more motivation to stay alive than to die in the daytime. But I do kind of have a feeling that if, if you don't in some way stand for something, you'll fall for anything. When you're putting together one of your own set lists, this is one of my final questions for you, and uh, I read an interview with one of the other guys in STP where they said when you were getting ready to go out on the road, maybe in last tour, and you put together your set list, you realize, man, we've accumulated a lot of quality work here. You know? Yeah, you know. Um, How does that feel? I mean, you, you know, you've been around it, eight I years. Mean, it, feel, it feels absolutely You're not amazing. dinosaurs. You're still young guys, and you've only been around eight years. Right. It's not like the Kiss show I'm going to go see tonight. You know, this is a, still a band that still has a a lot of uh, miles left in it, I think. But you, yeah. you look at the songs, and there's a lot of tunes there. Well, you know, I think we've been very fortunate for one thing. Um, you know, of course, there's always a bit of, of, of luck. Uh, and what, what do you call it, luck or... or um, or whatever word you use for it, I, I think uh, you know there's a, there is uh, of course always a bit of that, and I think you know we we um, uh, I have a lot of confidence in every member in this band, and uh, you know I think as a group we uh, we have a certain chemistry that we're able to tap into, um, and uh, you know out of that chemistry we we write really honest music, um, and. Uh, you know, I feel very fortunate for that. Um, I also feel like we're sort of, uh, you know, entering our uh, the the strongest period um, 
you know, of the band right now. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's a feeling that just we have. It's also a feeling we get from the audience. And, and, it's, and it's also, uh, you know, become evident with, uh, you know, the relationship that we now have with, uh, with you know, music critics. And, uh, you know, it's really been a hard-won sort of battle and a, uh, a sort of hard-to-get, come-here-go-away kind of relationship with rock critics uh, since our inception. Really? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, initially, you know, it's like we weren't really... Uh, I loved you when you came out. I've been well, you know, there were people that are true music fans that um, were, weren't looking just at the, at the, you know, at the surface level that, that appreciated us. But, I mean, there was a sort of general consensus that, um, you know, that we were, uh, you know, uh, following this... Um, you know, we came out in 1992, right when oh, yeah, the yeah, grunge thing hit and all that. Yeah, right. And so we had, you know, quite a battle to fight uh, initially. You know, but everything, it's, it's, it's really, like, turned around completely, and uh, which makes us feel amazing. Um, you know, because any artist who says they don't care about the uh, <clears throat> being um, validated by other musicians, other artists, or by other people... Um, especially music journalists who also dedicate their lives uh, to to music, um, you know they, they they wouldn't be telling the truth. Um, but I do feel that we are, you know, we're nearing into um, the strongest point that we've ever had as a as a live band um, on what we're doing now on stage and as songwriters. I mean, it was kind of like, you know, just how I think it took, uh, you know, the the Beatles and the Stones, even though they started out, you know, as amazing groups, it took them, you know, into their, like, seventh or eighth year to to get to the point where they really started creating something that, uh, you know, was absolutely just phenomenal. I mean, especially more so within the Stones case, I think. Right. You know, they were a great band in the 60s, but what they did... In uh, in you know from '69 to like '73 or '74 was uh, was you know rock and roll genius, right? And I think that's what we you know that's what we've always wanted to be as a band is uh, you know we're we're very uh, a, we are complete music fans and 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 students of of, of uh, popular music and, and and mainly rock and roll. And uh, the careers, the bands that we admire are the bands that have had careers that, uh, you know, that, that lasted and grew and, and, and sort of changed, uh, uh, you know, over the course of the records. Um, and uh, that's always what we wanted. Um, you know, when, when Atlantic Records, when Danny Goldberg signed us to Atlantic Records in 1992, he asked uh, us what our goals were. And... Uh, you know, we said our our goal is to be uh, the next Led Zeppelin for Atlantic Records. Oh, well, and uh, you know, that's right, pretty. Man. I mean, it's a pretty uh, tall order to try to <laughs> achieve. But um, you know, I mean, that's uh, I guess you know we've always had that sort of um, that sort of ambition, and uh, I feel that uh, you know, I mean. We're on a way to creating. You know, we've already, like you, like you said, have established a um, left a mark on, uh, you know, on rock and roll. And I think that if we remain humble um, with the fact that the music is the most important thing, and uh, and you know, I mean, we there's a story. You know, the story sort of has told itself. And uh, uh, but you know, first and foremost, like you said in the very beginning, it is about the music and. Uh, you know, because when you stop writing good songs, people just don't care anymore. Yeah. Excuse me, Alan? Yes. We have to make this the last Okay, question. I'm done. Uh, Scott, um, we're rooting for you, um, and uh, personally, and, and with this band, and uh, I really thank you for your time. Hey, Alan, thanks a lot. And, uh, you know, are you going to be coming down to the show? Absolutely. I'll bring you a copy of the story. and uh, That would be great. I'd really, yeah, I'd really like to meet you, man. All right, I'll try and set that up um, through Gail. Excellent. All right. All right, have a, have a really good day. Thanks, Scott. Take care. Bye.